Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. Today's episode, we're covering the exciting updates from Microsoft in July of 2024. If you follow along in the past, you know I focus in what's relevant to the MSP space, blocking out the noise from the 100 or so announcements that come from Microsoft each month. As a quick reminder, I always supplement these videos with a blog post down below with more helpful links and information about all these announcements. And if you haven't already subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel, like the video as well to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Let's go ahead and dive in. Before we dive in, just a quick announcement. I have launched a new application called Cloud Capsule. You can check out over 300 users have signed up in the past month, which has been amazing adoption, but effectively allows you to automate your Microsoft security assessments against the CIS controls and have a complete output of those pass fail values and some other security recommendations. So definitely go ahead, link below in this video, check it out and run a free assessment against your tenant. Okay, so getting into it here, we're going to start off with Teams as we usually do. This first one I think here is pretty cool, giving you the ability to rename the general channel. As you may or may not know, every team that you set up generally just has this general channel created by default. In the past, we haven't been able to change the name. Now you can do that and it'll be listed alphabetically along with the rest of the team's channels that you have as part of that team. This will happen mid-August and be complete by late August. So the next one here is if you consume the Teams Pro license or Teams meeting room license. This is automatic location updates for a bookable desk. This is a feature that's available that I really think highlights hybrid work that we have in today's workforce. But this is basically giving users the ability to connect for automatic updates to bookable desk. So it's basically saying you have like kind of a flexible workspace where people can come in and they can check out a space. And then you can have your Teams environment automatically update your status to show that you're in the office or you're not. This will happen early August to be complete by late August. Next one here is also related to Teams rooms. So we're talking about automatic resizing for your gallery view based off of the environment. And as you can see in the screenshot here, kind of resizing it so that the Teams room that has many different individuals would be a larger pixel size than the rest of the cards in that gallery view. This will happen early September and be complete by mid-September. Last one here for Teams is also related to Teams Rooms, but this is proximity join capabilities. If you're in a Teams room, you have that node that you can see in the screenshot where it would add multiple participants that are actually in this room. This will happen mid-September, be complete by late October. Shifting into Outlook here, I think this is a feature that will be really under-adopted, but it's nice to know and understand that it's there. This is giving the users the ability to quickly scan a QR code to sign in so they don't have to use their username and password to get on the mobile application for Outlook. This will happen mid-September and be complete by mid-November. Next, we're moving into OneDrive here. This is simply just adding support for various file types within the OneDrive web experience. You can see that within the screenshot here for things like your stream videos, your loops, your whiteboards, Power BI, um, files, things like that. So that'll happen mid-July and be complete by late July. So by the time you're watching this video, it's likely something you can see already. Microsoft Intune here is more of an admin function, but this is specifically for Mac OS management and looking at OneDrive known folder syncing. This is giving you some heightened capabilities. We've all seen Microsoft investing heavily in Mac OS management. It's kind of extending into that, giving you some more flexibility with configuration profiles to dictate the known folder move, silent move, if you will, for users where they can't really tamper with that. This will happen early July and be complete by late July. Check out my blog post to see the support article on how to configure that within Intune. Shifting into the Microsoft 365 apps, this is specifically if you're using information protection labels. This is part of base level licensing like business premium. Basic data taxonomy is always helpful, but this is an additional functionality. It's part of those labels for dynamic labeling or watermarking. And this is giving you the ability to dynamically give this watermark, as you can see in the screenshot with the user's UPN. Uh, when they apply a certain level label to the context of the document. And every consumer outside of that individual would see the watermark um, if they're viewing it. So again, helping with data sensitivity, data governance, data protection. This will happen mid-November, be complete by late November. Shifting into Microsoft Copilot here, this is definitely one of the most exciting features I've seen come from Copilot in a while. 
shifting from a lot of the reactive, I have to reach out to Copilot to get it to respond and give me some help with the data that I want to interact with to more of this proactive um, in that we get these schedule prompts um, on a cadence. So you can see that in the screenshot here, but basically you could say, hey, I want to summarize my email box every day at 8 a.m. That would be a really great prompt so that it can become proactive. And there's a lot more value to that in my mind than what exists today. This will happen early October, be complete by late October. The other thing to note is it's doing this with a Power Automate flow. So I'm very interested to see if we'll get some native connectors for Copilot within Power Automate, because that would be a really powerful experience to be able to create custom automations from that as well. Next one here is an integration in Microsoft Outlook for the Intelligent Recap. So we have this today within the Teams experience and the Teams application itself. But this is basically allowing you to access the recap from your calendar view within Outlook. This will happen mid-August, be complete by late August. Next one here is also an extension of existing functionality that exists today where you have coaching by Copilot and Microsoft Outlook. If you're not familiar, it basically gives you some suggestions on your tone or you know how to clean up your email basically for it to read better um, and some suggestions there. And previously, you kind of just had to look at those and make your adjustments manually. This is giving you the ability to apply all to your template or your email. This will happen early August to be complete by early September. Next one here is pretty cool, I think, with Designer um, using the Dolly integration here. If you've ever used this in Copilot, it's really powerful. Um, just on copilot.microsoft.com to generate images. But this is giving you the ability to do so directly within PowerPoint and Word. And I think it's one of the most powerful features, honestly, of the AI functionality, because these images are pretty spot on from what you try to uh, describe, you know, within your prompt itself. This will happen July. So likely by the time you're seeing this, this will be integrated here with Microsoft Designer. Shifting into the last section here, this is the admin section. Many of us saw this announcement, but Microsoft came out with a new product offering called the Microsoft Entra Suite. It's a bundle of certain services The highlight, I think, uh, being that you do get the new ZTNA or SASE solution uh, where you have private access or internet access with Microsoft solution, which is like a modern age uh, VPN type of a solution. So I think, you know, from the bundled perspective, the other features that are part of this, generally speaking for us in SMB MSP space, not going to be something we care about. You can get the internet or private access solutions for $5 a user per month. So just keep that in mind. If that's something that you're looking to explore, many of us are, um, just given the nature of wanting to lock things down, but move off of a legacy solution like a VPN. But this is GA today. You can also get a trial of this just to test it out. And I would for, again, the SASE ZTNA solution. Next one here is a nice win for email security and the support for IPv6 enablement for accepted domains in Microsoft and Exchange Online. And this is going to happen October 1st. You'll still be able to support, obviously, IPv4 um, addresses as well, too. But this is heightened security and allowing for multiple checks there. You can see more about this announcement in my blog. And the other one here, I don't think will impact a lot of us, but just want to call it out because they're going end of life for admins being able to receive passwords and email when you go through your basic management of users for either a net new user on board or you generate a password or you're resetting somebody's password so if you're doing that today as part of a help desk flow um, you should you know take a look at that and figure out a different process but they're basically positioning you to you know take the password and you know perform the actual transfer in some type of secure fashion that you define within your environment so again this will happen august 30th um, as far as when you won't be able to do that anymore. So you get a whole month to get ahead of this. Next one here is also administrative kind of end of life here or big announcement for OneDrive for unlicensed accounts. Again, this might not impact you greatly in a lot of use cases. The way I think about this, when we talk about users or account OneDrive accounts that have active storage in our tenants but don't have a license, is just from our offboarding activity, right? We um, convert our user to a shared mailbox. We give access to their OneDrive temporarily to another user. Typically after 30 days, you know, you should be able to deprecate that fully. But this is basically saying that if they've been licensed, unlicensed for more than 90 days, they'll become archived immediately. So you need to understand the full considerations here. It's a little bit too long to go through in this post, 
but I have all the supporting documentation in my blog post so you can see that. This also could come up with certain retention policies you could have in place, things like that. Just want to be cognizant of this. If you do have OneDrive data that might be pertinent for over 90 days um, within your customer environments. And then the very last one here is related to Microsoft managed conditional access policies in the tenant. We started to see this over a time where they're beginning to hard enforce and start to transfer people over to their preferred conditional access policies. And this is really just to upgrade security across the environment, right? We had security defaults that was um, pushed out in 2019 that really took us to a new layer where we're applying MFA by default to most of our users. This is specifically around if you have per user enforcement, which is considered the legacy method of MFA enforcement, they're going to turn on a conditional access policy. If you have you know, licensing that supports conditional access to enforce that new policy where it's just enforcing MFA through that method versus the legacy method. So it's very important that you're aware of this. You can turn it off if you really wanted to, but the ramifications of that is that they will enforce MFA across all users. And so you have to be cognizant of that because you may have service accounts that need to be excluded. You may have break glass accounts you want to exclude that aren't defined already in the policy. And obviously users that haven't set up an MFA yet for any reason will start to get prompted to, which is the biggest help desk concern. So timelines could vary this based off of your tenant in mind. A couple of the ones that I manage um, just as sandbox accounts, August 5th seems to be the consistent date, but you will want to pay attention to that because it could impact you greatly. Uh, for those of you that haven't adopted already conditional access or have enrolled um, in that more modern method of multi-factor. So definitely check that out um, before this comes out. Okay, that's everything I have for you guys in today's video. Definitely like and subscribe again if you haven't already to the channel to see more content around Microsoft in the MSP space and comment below with any of the features that you're most excited about. I'll see you guys next week.